that signifies is what Jesus did for us. He died not for nobody else. He died for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And then uh, that's 3.16, John 3.16, John 15.13 says, No greater love does a man have than this, than when he laid down his life for his friends. And then uh, Romans 5.8 says, But God commended his great love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died uh, for us. Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. This is what happens when you have a family. This is dynamics of, of the family, natural and spiritual. You bound together and you bear ye one another's burdens. Ye bear ye one another's burdens. Amen. Amen. Bear ye one another's burdens. Amen. Pastor Sherry, do you have anything you want to add on here right now? How does this sound? Amen. Praise God. Thanking God for the river of life. Praise God that's coming out of uh, Minister Anthony Weathersby. Praise God. And I'm just enjoying the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Being blessed. Praise God. Because it's true anyhow. God's word. Hallelujah. Was sent to us to deliver us from all destruction. Amen. Praise God. And that destruction is in our minds. And God is word that comes to uh, help us get back into right focus of what he said. Not what we think, praise God. Not what no one else says, but what he says. Amen. Praise God. And we can't lean to our own understanding because Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. Acknowledge him in all of our ways and he shall, what, direct our path. Amen. And though we may have different opinions, praise God, within our families, different um, as it was forestated, different characteristics and opinions and things that bring separation. There may be people in our family that are following Christ and some not following Christ. That also brings a certain type of division, praise God. But the love of God that we should have for one another should never allow us to be totally separated. Amen. He said that if we sought him first and all his righteousness, Praise God. Every All other things will be added. Amen. Amen. And even um, in Matthew 12, when Jesus, praise God, was in the temple, praise God, um, in the 46th verse we're going to read, Jesus was still speaking to the people when, behold, his mother and, father and brother stood outside seeking to speak to him. Someone said to him, listen, your mother and your brother are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But he replied to the man who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And Jesus was not being sarcastic at all, praise God, as some would depict that he was. And in stretching out his hand toward not only the twelve disciples, but all his adherents, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whosoever does the will of my Father in heaven is, <coughs> excuse me, my brother and sister and mother. And that's why it's so important to do uh, line upon line and precept upon precept, a little here and a little there, because each scripture answers the other, praise God. And so it, it goes on to say, as he was saying, he who loves and takes more pleasure in anything or anybody other than God, that becomes idolatry. Amen. And he goes on to say, Jesus said this, you're not worthy of me. He didn't mean for us not to love him, but to love them less than him. Amen. Love him more. Love them less, love each other less, and love him more. Praise God, because if we, saints of God and people of God, try to save our life to be accepted, to be loved, to be liked, Running after uh, flesh, praise God, hallelujah, to be accepted, to be loved, to be wanted. And we got to trust God. If we do that, praise God, then we will lose our life in this life. Praise God, hallelujah. But if we lose our life, what, for the gospel. See, this separation also came about because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the gospel does bring separation. It brings separation between the right and the wrong, the good and the bad, the bitter and the sweet. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. We're, uh, we're not to be ashamed of it because what? It is the power of God unto what? Salvation. This is what it's all about. 
the salvation of God's people. Amen. Hallelujah. And we thank God for that. Amen. And whoever loses his life on his account, what? We want to find it again in that higher life. What higher life? Praise God. The life that we live now by the way of Jesus Christ. But even more importantly, the higher life is the life that we're going to live with each other, with Christ after a while and by and by. And so he says that he who receives and welcomes and accepts, praise God, hallelujah, this, praise God, receives him. This is God's word, amen. In the beginning was God's word. And so therefore, we must, saints of God, endure hardness as a good soldier, praise God, hallelujah. And you know what? It's only hard to the one that's transgressing against God's word. It's only hard to the one who will act in rebellion to God's word. That ain't what it means. No, we're reading for yourself. That's why we give scriptures. That's why we take time to read the word of God so that those that are listening, praise God, can go back and like the Bereans did in the book of Acts and see if it's so. Amen. And there what? There is a healing, y'all, for the family. Yes, there is. There is a healing, especially amongst those who are of Christ. Amen. We operate by a higher code of ethics. That's the word of God. We operate by a higher mind, praise God. And that mind is the mind of Christ. The Bible said the mind of Christ that what? Can be instructed. Now, these things, according to the word of God that we're reading and talking about, um, 1 Corinthians, I believe the second chapter, lets us know that the natural man cannot perceive what's going on, even tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must be in Christ. We must be saved. We must have and possess his spirit to be un to be able to do what? Understand spirit. And we're going to read that. I believe it's 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. This is good word. It's a, it's a blessing. Not good because of us. It's good because of Jesus. Hallelujah. He wrote the book, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. If you get upset about anybody, with anybody, get upset with him, but then you can't stay upset with him too long. Amen. Because it's not beneficial to us. 1 Corinthians 2 chapter the 14th verse. But the natural, the natural what? Non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts of and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God. So those of us that are enduring, uh, we're going to keep on reading. Those of us that are enduring uh, different types of isms and schisms and things amongst one another in our homes and families, you as a child of God, those that are are of the of the Spirit of God and who are walking what? In a love relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it's just not enough to say, I know him or I'm saved and, and, and this, that, and other, and not... Uh, believe in what we're in and because if you don't believe in what you're in then you're not going to even live the life that he's calling for us to live day by day dying daily to our flesh amen amen and he goes on to say praise God but the natural un non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and teachings and revelations of the spirit of God for they are what they are folly otherwise meaningless nonsense to him so don't get upset. Praise God for those of us that are of Christ. Don't get upset. Praise God. A natural man acts like a natural man. A baby acts like a baby. Why expect any more from them if they're if they're in a certain place? That's what you expect. If I'm a sinner, then you expect me for me to do things that cause for me to be a sinner. Praise God. Hallelujah. All that we have to do is what? Walk in love. That's what we need to do. Not fuss and fight. And bicker and holler because once you understand what the word of God is saying to us, praise God, then that resolves a whole lot of things within our spirit and our mind, praise God, in our attitude. And it brings us to a rest, praise God. And then we can learn how to be loved by God whose love is perfect. And once we understand how we were loved by God and experience the love of God, then we can turn around to one another and love you one another. Praise God, because we all are imperfect human beings. We all are imperfect, but we have a perfect love whereby we love one another. Amen. So therefore, nobody can continue to keep the finger pointing at each other because what? There's something about you is imperfect. There's something about me that's imperfect. The only great thing about us is the God that lives down on the inside of us. And he is the perfect, the sinless one. Amen. 
And so it says, for they are folly to the non-spiritual person. It's nonsense to him. And he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them. This is why a lot of times, uh, this is why there's division. Amen. When you're dealing with spiritual against non-spiritual, of course there's going to be some division. That goes without saying because the word points it out. Amen. And the word of God lets us know wisdom is the principal thing, but in all of our getting, get our understanding. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the word of God sanctifies us and, and separates us from what? All these ill feelings and these wars and rumors of wars that James, the fourth chapter, starting at the first verse, talks about what's coming for all these wars, these attitudes, what's going on. Hallelujah. Praise God. It certainly ain't coming from God. So we all have to allow the love light of God's word to search our hearts. Praise God. Hallelujah. And praise God. And then the word of God says in Galatians 6 and 1, ye that are spiritual. You that are spiritual. Who's the spiritual one? Those that are controlled by the Holy Ghost. Don't say you controlled by him, praise God, and then show another manner of, of attitude. That can't be. Amen. And we listen, we all are far short to the glory of God. Amen. I do too. Amen. But I, I go down with the word, but I get up with the word. That word will pick you back up, set you back on straight street, give you understanding, not only about you and God, but about somebody else. Amen. Because we have to be down here with people. And it says what? Um, he is incapable of knowing them, of progressively recognizing, understanding, and becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned. You can't expect a non-spiritual person to understand spiritual things. Praise God. They cannot spiritually discern it and are, and are and estimate it or even comprehend it. They can't even appreciate it. But the spiritual man... <coughs> The one that's of the Lord, the one that has been born of his spirit, the one that has been what created in his likeness and in his image by the spirit of God. That man tries all things, examines, investigates, inquires into questions and discerns all things, yet himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. He can read the meaning of everything, but no one can properly discern or appraise or get an insight into him. A spiritual man cannot be rightly judged by a non-spiritual person. So therefore, we that are spiritual should not be all getting all hot-headed about what's going on amongst one another in our homes and our families or wherever the chaotic, um, wherever chaos is or wherever uh, upheaval is between one another. Once you understand what the scripture is saying, then you walk in love. You walk what? Galatians 5, 16. Walk in the spirit. Walk in obedience to God's word where it humbles you and I so that we won't what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Yet him himself is put on trial, but he can't be judged. For who has known or understood the mind, the counsels, and purposes of the Lord so as to guide, instruct him, and give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts, feelings, and purposes what of his heart. None of us, praise God, can counsel God. Amen. God is what counsels us. This is why he has his word. The word is the very counsel of the Lord. Nobody counsels him. He counsels us, praise God. He the one that leads God and instructs us by his Holy Spirit into all truth. And when we understand the truth, if we can stand the truth and take the truth, then we're made free. For whom the Son set free is free indeed. And you shall know the truth about what God says in his word and it will make you free. Therefore, we can get along a lot more better. Praise God, for especially those of us that are calling ourselves spiritual. Praise God. Hallelujah. Being spiritual operate in the will of God by obeying God's word. Amen. Praise God. This is how we are more Im impressive to those who are not saved. This is how, praise God, we are greater examples to those who are non-spiritual, whether it be our home, whether it be family, people on the job, whatever the case may be. Amen. We ought to be that light because we're the ones who should be walking with greater understanding of what God is saying. Praise God. But when we walk after the flesh, where all the feelings and the emotions and the attitude is, <laughs> that when we walk after the soul, where all that is, <coughs> praise God, hallelujah, then we're going to make some wrong mistakes and wrong decisions. But when you operate in the presence of the Lord, God's presence will always demand from us a decision. 
God's presence. So many don't want to live in this presence.